ever wondered how modern robots don't run into walls? Or how driverless cars know where obstacles are positioned so that they can avoid them? Well, one modern sensor system which can achieve such 360 degrees of object detection is called LiDAR, which is short for light detection and ranging. And since the company Elector is currently selling a small LiDAR system with decent hobbyist specifications, I picked one up without hesitation. So in this video we will find out how this LiDAR sensor works, how we can display its data on a computer and use it with an Arduino, and finally I will assemble a small robot with the sensor on top to possibly create a crude DIY Roomba. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Elector, who not only run an online store, but also publish quite awesome electronics magazines that I've been reading for years now. And best of all, Elector is offering a free green digital membership to their magazines for all my viewers. So have a look in the video description for the coupon code GREATSCOTS19 and start reading Elector for free today. After unboxing the LiDAR system, I had a closer look at the quality of the plastic housing as well as the power PCB. And I have to say that it seems like a compact, well-built, robust unit that can easily be mounted to objects with its four spacers. But before praising it too much, let's continue by removing the top lid in order to find a big metal chunk in which a laser diode as well as probably a photo receiver is housed. At the back we can also find an STM32 microcontroller unit, which is the brain of the LiDAR system. Simplified speaking, it turns on the laser diode 5000 times per second to send out a laser beam. This beam then gets reflected from the object that is in its way and thus hits the photo receiver, which then tells the STM32 that the laser beam has returned. Now since the system measures the time difference between the firing of the laser beam and its receiving, and since we know that light travels with a speed of 299,792 meters per second, we can easily calculate what distance the laser beam travels and thus by dividing it by 2, we got the distance to our object. Of course, this kind of measurement is only possible in one fixed direction. In order to get a full 360 degree field, the system uses a motor to rotate the laser with a frequency of 6 to 12 Hz. That is very simplified how the distance measuring works. But now that our STM32 got the final distance values, how does it send it over to the communication port on the bottom? I mean, solid wire connections are not possible because the control PCB constantly rotates. To find that out, I removed the control as well as the power PCB and found LEDs and light sensors on both of them, which are probably used to send over the data. Both PCBs also feature a more or less hidden coil, that are both directly connected to special ICs, which are utilized for wireless charging, and that is basically how the control PCB gets powered. But nevertheless, the power PCB got one more IC, which is a DC to DC converter, which is used to turn the 5V input voltage to 9V to power the DC motor. And with that being said, we are now familiar with the basic functional principle of this LiDAR sensor. So after I finished resembling it, it was time to start testing it by following the user manual guides given by the manufacturer. That means I connected the LiDAR to an included USB to UART converter, hooked that up to my computer, installed the drivers for it and started the given point cloud viewer software. There I selected the X4 LiDAR and then basically clicked the start button, which not only activated the motor of the system, but also created this beautiful dot map on my computer. 
Now by bringing an object with a known distance next to the sensor, it seems to measure the distance within the given resolution of the datasheet. Brilliant! And if you are confused how the angle value is referenced, then let me tell you that we got a 0 degree line, which then increases to 360 degrees in the clockwise direction. As you might already have guessed, this system is not only a lot of fun to play around with, but it is also useful to, for example, map a room. And thus a robot should be capable of maneuvering through this room with those information. Which is basically what modern vacuum cleaner robots can do, and what I wanted to try next. The software is not suitable for that though, because we need the raw angle and distance values which can be extracted from the sensor through its UART serial interface. That is why I opened the real-term serial capture program, where I set the baud rate of my communication port to 128,000, like it is mentioned in the datasheet. After opening the ports, the sensor starts spinning and it greets us with a few lines. Next, I found out that by sending over the hexadecimal value A5 and 60, we can enter the scanning mode, which will hopefully output the point data. After sending those values over though, the software starts showing tons of unreadable signs. The problem was that the sensor only sends over hexadecimal values. So after fixing this mistake, we can not only feel like we're in the matrix, but we also got all the angle and distance information we need. But because decoding such hexadecimal values by hand does not make much sense, I instead turned to the offered Arduino library for the X4 LiDAR sensor, whose example code can basically spit out the desired angle and distance values. There was just one problem, being that the sensor's maximum communication voltage is based around 3.3 volts, while the common Arduino uses 5 volts. That is why I had to use an Arduino Pro Mini, which I powered and programmed with a 33 volt FTDI breakout. So after connecting the TX and RX pin of the sensor to the Arduino, according to its pinout given by the datasheet, and additionally powering it with 5 volts, I uploaded the Arduino codes and had a look at the serial data through the real-term software. Now there seems to be some correct values, but then again tons of error messages and distances of 0mm. But nevertheless, I wanted to see whether the available data is enough for my crude vacuum robot experiments. That is why I ordered myself this pretty cheap robot kit that comes with wheels, acrylic plates, motors and tons of screws. Now it took me around one hour to completely assemble it, because the kit came without instructions. But once I was done with it, it was a breeze to mount the LiDAR sensor. And thus I was almost ready for testing. Before doing that though, I had to create a small power control circuit that turns the 5 volts of my battery power source, used for the motors and the LiDAR system, into 3.3 volts for the Arduino. And while I was at it, I also added two MOSFETs to control the motor speed later on through pulse width modulation. According to this finalized wiring scheme, I then hooked up all the components to one another and firstly created a small test code to see whether the motors would function correctly, which as you can see in this tipsy bicycle rider simulation seems to work just fine. So next I tried implementing the LiDAR system and an algorithm which pretty much stops the robot when it is about to crash and then lets it turn into the direction with the furthest away object, only to repeat this procedure. But since I am, let's face it, pretty terrible at writing codes, my final results did only work out to some degree. So all in all, using this hobbyist LiDAR system with an Arduino is possible, but not easy to accomplish. But nevertheless, I hope you still learned quite a bit about such LiDAR sensors. 
If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hitting the notification bell. Stay creative, and I will see you next time!